Hello, today we're going to look at digital imaging for A-level physics. We have a system of numbering called the decimal system. There are 10 numbers available to us, that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and when we get to 9 we've used up all the numbers and so the next number has to be a combination of numbers we've already used before. That's the decimal system. When it comes to digital systems, we use what's called the binary system, and we are restricted to just two numbers, naught and one, off or on. And so if we're going to number using the uh, binary system, then of course we're okay for the first number, zero, and we're okay for the second number, one, but when we get to two, we're not allowed to use two, so we now have to use these numbers again, and the next available number is 10. And then we can use 11 for three, but we can't use 12 for four, because two's not available, so we now have to go up to 100. So 100 is four, 101 is five, 110 is six, and 111 is seven. Now we have to go up to 1,000 and 1,001 becomes 9, and 1,010 becomes 10, and so on. And it turns out that if you go to a number which is 8, each of these is called a bit. So this is 1 bit, 1 bit, 2 bits, 2 bits, 3 bits, 3 bits, 3 bits, 3 bits, 4 bits, 4 bits, 4 bits, because there are 4 bit numbers, 1 or 0. If you go up to 8 bits, and the maximum you can have is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. That is equivalent to the number 255. And since you've also got 0, that means you're given 256 alternatives using what's called an 8-bit number. And we have a special name for an 8-bit number. It's called a byte. And that is information that um, computers use. The number of alternatives available to you, in other words, the number of alternative combinations of one and zero that's available to you, doubles with each additional bit. Let's have a look. When you only had one bit available, you could only have the two numbers naught and one. So when you had one bit available, you could have two numbers. When you got two bits available, you can have one, two, three, four numbers. So two bits gave you four numbers. When you have three bits available, you can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. So three bits gives you eight numbers. And you can see what's happening here. You're always getting double the number of alternatives for every additional bit. So Four bits will give you 16 alternatives. Five bits gets you 32 alternatives. Six bits gets you 64. Seven bits gets you 128 alternatives. And then, as I've just shown you, eight bits gets you 256 alternatives. And the general formula for this is that the number of alternatives is equal to the number two times we call it i, and i is the number of bits. So just to show you that that was right, if you take uh, three bits, then you would have two cubed, which is eight, and that's exactly what we showed. If you have five bits, then you have two to the power five, which is 32, and that's what we showed there. So if you want to know the number of alternatives, then you simply take two to the power i, where i is the number of bits. Or you can, of course, take the logarithm of both sides, and if you take logarithm to the base two, then you'll get logarithm to the base two of n, where n is the number of alternatives, is equal to logarithm to the base two of two to the i. Well, i comes down on the outside, and that becomes i times log to the base 2 of 2, which is 1. So now you've got a formula that says that log to the base 2 of the number of alternatives is equal to the number of bits. So let's suppose we want to know how we could encode the alphabet 
into bits. How many bits would we need to do that? Well, there are 26 characters in the alphabet, so 26 is our number. We need 26 different alternatives in order to uniquely define A and B and C and so on. And so we would simply say that we need log to the base 2 of 26 will equal the number of bits we need. And that actually comes to 4.7. Well, you can't have 4.7 bits, so essentially you would need 5 bits. And as you can see from the chart we showed before, that's right, because if you have 5 bits, you have 32 alternatives. We actually only need 26. Whereas if you'd had 4 bits, uh, you would have had some letters that you couldn't have reproduced, because you'd only have 16 alternatives, and you need 26. Now the way that a digital photograph works is that you take the photograph and you divide it up into what are called pixels, which means that there are lots of little elements of the picture. We shall see how many in just a moment. And the point is that every single pixel has one colour and that colour is represented by some information contained in bits. So if you think about it, if you want a black and white picture, you could have 256 shades of grey, and you would only need 8 bits, or 1 byte, for each pixel. So that each pixel with um, 8 bits, typically you use the number 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, that's 8 bits. That would be black. And then one, 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 one would be white. And all the other 254 options or alternatives that exist between these would be varying shades of grey, but they would start from black and they would go from very dark grey right the way down to light grey and finally to white. And so each pixel would contain one 8-bit number that would represent and could be converted by a computer, for example, into a colour, in this case a grayscale colour, and you then construct your picture using these bits. Now obviously the more pixels you have, the more detail you can get into the resolution of the picture. If you want colour, then typically what is included in a colour system is uh, information about the extent to which each of the primary colours contributes to the colour in one particular pixel. And that usually means that you need to know how much red, how much green, and how much blue there is in each pixel, and that will determine precisely the shade of colour that you want in that uh, pixel. And we'll come on to the consequence of that in just a moment. But let's just explore what you can do if you have a picture made up of pixels. I'm going to take just nine pixels, uh, a three by three for illustrative purposes, and I'm going to use decimal numbers just so we don't uh, confuse ourselves. So I'm going to have a picture which is made up of numbers like this. Four, of course, would in fact in binary be 10, two in sorry, it would be 100, 2 in binary would be 10, but I've used decimal um, to keep it simple. And the idea is that the higher the number, as the number increases, the picture gets lighter. So obviously 4 is lighter than 2. So this picture would be a light grey around the outside and a dark grey in the middle. Now, what computers can do very easily is number manipulation. So you could simply ask the computer to double the numbers in each case. So what we would now get is a picture where the numbers would be 8, 8, 8, 8, 4, 8, 8, 8, 8. That's just doubling what's here. Computers do that very easily. Now what would have happened? Well, um, we're, because we've got the numbers higher, they will be lighter. So this will now be a very light grey, but that will now be a darker grey. 
In other words, what we've done is it, we've improved the contrast. The difference between 2 and 4 is very small. The difference between 4 and 8 is much larger. So the contrast between these two pictures will have been increased and improved. So you can increase and improve contrast with digital images very easily. You can also use a device called false colouring to um, improve a clear difference. So suppose we had the picture we had before where we have four all around the outside but only two in the middle. So we would say that this was light grey and this is darker grey. What we could simply assign is that four equals green and two equals pink. Now, you might not be able to see quite so clearly a dark grey against a light grey, but you would certainly see a pink against a background of green. So once again, we can, as it were, enhance the picture by assigning different values to the numbers. Once we've got numbers, we can do anything with it. And we can also redu reduce noise. Um, no picture is ever perfect. One always gets spurious bits of information coming in. So let's suppose we've got a picture, this is a part of a picture, where the decimal values are 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, but in the middle we've got a rogue uh, value of 12. That got in there somehow, maybe a stray piece of light um, suddenly hit the screen. Um, it shouldn't be there and it's going to distort the picture. What you can do is you can tell the computer to go through all the numbers in all the pixels and to replace each number by the median of itself and the surrounding eight numbers. All pixels will, of course, if we take this pixel here, they will all be surrounded by eight other numbers. And the median is the middle. It's not the average. If you take, we've got nine numbers, and what you do is you simply take the fifth highest and that's the median. Well, in this case, you can see that the fifth highest is going to be two. And so 12 would be replaced by two. And that's a way of getting rid of some of the more extreme values that are almost certainly going to be spurious. There is a system called the Laplace rule, which is a means of determining edges where they are not clear. This time I'm going to take a set of pixels 6 by 4 and we're going to have the values 6 in this half and the values 2 in this half. And although it's pretty obvious to us that the edge is along this line here this will be light, this will be dark, because remember the higher the number, the lighter the colour, the lighter grey, let's assume this is a grey scale. But it may not be too clear. If, if we're talking about uh, values from 0 to 256, the difference between 2 and 6 might not be that obvious. But once again, we can use, because these are numbers, we can get computers to um, sort it all out for us. And what we ask them to do is for each pixel you take the number in the pixel so we call that the number p and you multiply it by four and then you subtract from it the value in the pixel above the value in the pixel below and the value in the pixel to the left and the value in the pixel to the right so you take any pixel take this one 6, multiply it by 4, and then subtract the values above, below, to the right, and to the left. Now what do you do? What do you get? Well, let's start off by looking at this pixel here. That's got a 6 in it. So we would multiply 6 by 4, that's this rule here, and then we subtract the values above, below, and right, and left. Well, above, below, right and left are all sixes, so it's minus six, minus six, minus six, minus six, and that comes to zero. Six fours minus six lots of four is zero. And zero is black. 
So this pixel would become black. What about this pixel here, the two value? Well, again, you do the rule two times four minus the values above, below, right and left, and they're all twos. So it's two times four minus four lots of two, and that two is going to be zero, and that's going to be black. So this will become black. But what happens when we get a value here, which is on the edge? Well, now we're going to have, you multiply that value by four, so it's six by four, minus above, below, right and left. But here we've got above is six, below is six, to the left is six, but to the right is two. So it's going to be minus six, minus six, minus six, minus two, and that's going to be four. And so that pixel is going to be not black. It's going to be um, a gray color. And so what you'll actually see on your screen is that all of the pixels that aren't at the edge will be colored black, but you'll have a much lighter value at the edge. So if you need to def determine where the edges arise, then the Laplace rule is the way to do it. So let's consider the picture that you might draw, uh, you might take from your camera. This is relatively small for cameras these days, but you might have a thousand pixels across, or rather, a thousand by 600 pixels, so a thousand divisions this way, 600 divisions this way. Each of the little squares that is um, caused by those divisions is called a pixel. And what essentially you're doing is each pixel will have a number in it. For black and white, it is sufficient to have one byte because one byte is eight bits. Eight bits will give you 256 bits of information. And that means you can have any shade of gray from naught, which is black, to 256, which is white, and 254 shades of gray in between. And if you were to have, this would be then 600,000 pixels, each of one byte. So that would be 600,000 bytes per photograph, which is of course called 600 kilobytes. That's the way we express it. So that picture would be a 600 kilobyte picture. But of course, if you're, you're looking for color, then you're going to need more than 256 variations because you need all the colors and shades as well. TVs typically use 65,536 colors. That's all the different alternatives or shades. And if you take the formula that we got before, which is that the number of bits required is equal to the log to the base two of the number of alternatives you need, 65536, you'll find that log to the base two of that number is 16. So you need 16 bits per pixel in order to have 65,536 shades of color. And of course, 16 bits, since there are eight bits to a byte, is two bytes. So for black and white, you only need one byte per pixel, and that gets you 256 shades. But if you give two bytes per pixel, then you get the ginormous 65,536 um, uh, different types of color. And that means, of course, that your byte size will increase. Instead, if you want a 600 by 1000 picture in color, each of those 600,000 pixels will need two bytes, and consequently your picture size will not be 600 kilobytes anymore, but twice that, which is 1.2 megabytes. So that's starting to get a large picture. And of course, 600 by 1,000 is now quite small in picture terms. Um, cameras will take much finer resolution than that. Um, and consequently, the size of the pictures, which is determined by the number of pixels times two bytes, because you need two bytes for each pixel, 
the size of the picture increases dramatically.